one of the main ways to use collaborative technologies within a classroom is to allow students to work outside of the classroom so that when you finally get them in um, face to face sessions that you can do things related to their work instead of having them presenting work or doing work in class. So it really frees up that in class time for um, I think more productive work and the collaborative technologies allow the the process of the work to happen outside. So in my media ethics class, which I taught when I first got to Ball State, we hearken ourselves back to those four things that we know lead to collective wisdom. There has to be a diversity of opinion, um, independence in thinking, a decentralized way to uh, gather information, and then a way to aggregate that. And the way in which I did that was uh, I set up a wiki environment where the groups would work. And what would happen is that on Tuesdays they would get an assignment, and that assignment would be to read a case study um, and as a group put together um, an entire process. And so they would have to go through and they would create their own environments. And there was literally no time for them to um, meet in person because the presentations would be due on Thursday, so 48 hours later. And they would have to go through and create this case study. And the case study would involve creating definitions, finding dilemmas, um, delving into the philosophical foundations, looking at meta-ethics, going and getting outside information, looking through the normative ethics, um, breaking down the moral duties and the decisions. So they were gathering lots of information and they were pulling it all together. Um, and the thing about only having 48 hours to do this, I set this up, is one, it, it mirrors what happens in real life, right? You have um, dilemmas that come up and you oftentimes don't have a week to sit around and figure out what to do. So I was trying to speed up the process. And in speeding up the process within a group environment, um, they just, all these kids are so busy, they didn't have time to meet um, for very much time outside of class. So creating this a collaborative environment, they, and, and know that the kids set up this format so everybody's wiki looked different. I helped them identify the framework that they might want to use. Um, so that people could contribute in the way and in the time that they could. So if you were free at 2 p.m. and somebody else was free at 10 p.m., you knew what the framework for what you had to go find. So everybody could come in and add their own thinking. The content was uh, created and they would print it out. They would, um, out of this, they would create uh, a one-page summary abstract uh, so that they could hand out to the class so people could follow along. Then on Thursday, they would come in and they would do their presentation. And that was oftentimes the first time they had presented this work together. Like there was just, there was no time um, to get together to meet, to practice this. And so everybody would be assigned specific sections and they would have created this in a collaborative environment. So I, what happened in class was that we could actually see the presentation. We didn't, I didn't have to wait two weeks for them to do work. I had set up an environment where they could quickly gather data and information. And you would begin to see in the comment section where they would hash out and debate um, specific points they were trying to make or they would use uh, Skype or things like that. Um, and it became sort of a joke that um, on Wednesday nights on Facebook, like I could see all of my students gathering and talking as they were pulling together this bit of information. They would um, they would gather and be posting stuff on their status updates and things. So it became this sort of classroom that extended outside of the classroom. One of the interesting things that happened is I, I run a, a libertarian classroom. I believe that you know, students have the, um, and all people have the the right to control their own destiny. And so they came to me at one point and said, we, we because they did 13 papers in 16 weeks, um, and these papers were five-page single-space papers, so 10-page in um, academic speak, uh, that they would have to write. So after they would do their group presentation, they would have to then write their own version. So I called it the sort of the dissenting Supreme Court um, version of ethics. So they would do this group presentation, gather all this stuff, and then they would have to write their own singular paper. And around uh, after about the tenth one, the student said, "Look, we feel like we have this under control, and we don't feel like if we continue to do these papers and presentations, like we're all getting A's on these now. We're not we're not learning anything else." And I said, okay, that is your right, so you have to convince me using the things, the tools that I've given you, how to go about doing this. 
And so there were 29 people in the class, and I said at least 15 people must vote yes. It's going to be a direct democracy. And if 15 of the 29 come up with a thing, and by the way, you have two days to do this. So they constructed a wiki. Um, and if you download this PDF and read uh, this particular part of the wiki, you'll find out that it's, uh, it's rather funny. They constructed this scenario where students were overworked and this mean teacher was telling them uh, that they needed to work harder. Um, and within two days, 19 people had made 15 substantive changes within this environment, arguing that um, we should have a different uh, approach to the last three weeks of class. Now, unfortunately for them, they didn't, uh, they didn't come up with what that should be, so I got to determine that, and I actually made it worse, uh, because as a libertarian, I also let them know that if you're not in control of your destiny, somebody else will be. And so uh, uh, in that sense, they learned a different lesson. But the idea that they could construct um, a formal argument for their teacher to change the way in which the class worked using a collaborative environment was um, extremely important to me. And because I had modeled that behavior and set up behaviors that um, environments where I wasn't grading them and where I wasn't um, involved, they felt very free to, to use that environment to think better. And in fact, anecdotally, and while I'm not a big believer in anecdotal evidence, anecdotally, um, the students that have come out of that class have told me they have used these kinds of environments out in their work life as a way to gather information and make decisions better and more quickly. Um, which suggests to me, we get back to how students learn, that, that I've modeled this in a way that they can uh, use this outside of here. In a very simple way, um, I use PBWiki. Um, PBWiki allows you very quickly to edit. Um, it has a uh, what you see is what you get environment, so it's very much like a Word document. The problem is you can't paste from a Word document into this PBWiki because of the formatting problems. But you can um, take what's in a wiki and put it into a Word document and, and keep the formatting. So in that sense, it's good. You have to um, use text documents or type directly into the wiki. But once you do that, you can um, extract that data. Uh, you can create pages very simply, so you can if you just hit the create page button and you can make a button for anybody, um, any of the groups or any of the people within your classroom. And you can upload files. Um, now, I generally link video files from YouTube in there, but it does allow you to upload um, presentations, images, and things like that. So you can actually um, create uh, some interesting wiki pages using uh, and like if I wanted to you could embed this video within the wiki so that they could students could see like here's a way that you could use this so when you're using these wikis in the classroom like I always approach it with how is this technology going to help my students do their work outside of the classroom so that when they come in they're doing uh, work that is better, that they are thinking better. And while they're developing that outside, I can actually see the work they're doing. So if they're off base, I can correct it. I don't have to wait till they're in class to correct it. And this is one way that you can use wikis within the classroom.